Welcome to River Point and West End Church. My name is Ryan, and we are so glad that you are tuning in today. And here's why. Last week, we started a collection of talks, a series called Be Rich. And that's good news for you and for me, because who doesn't want to be rich? I mean, uh, for me, I grew up pretty poor, but I was given a scholarship to go to a private school across town. So I grew up poor around rich people. At least I thought they were rich. I, I used to measure rich by sleepovers at friends' houses. All I knew is that when it was the leak's turn to host a sleepover, your expectations needed to be rather low. Okay, you should probably eat before you come. There would be no trip to Blockbuster to rent a new VHS. By the way, if you don't know what Blockbuster is, it was this place that people would go on Friday nights to get movies, and if you didn't return it within a few days, they'd charge you extra money. Blockbuster made a lot of money on me for not returning movies back in time. Anyways, that's what you would do on Friday nights. So here's the deal. Well, you didn't do that at the Leaks house, but when I went to one of my rich friends' house, it was a whole different ball game. okay? Their parents would take us to Blockbuster, and we could rent whatever we wanted. We could get candy, video games, movies, and when we got back to the house, food was provided, okay? You didn't have to bring your own snacks. They had unlimited snacks, okay? The only time I saw that many snacks in my house was maybe on Halloween, okay? Maybe. So the older I got, the more I began to measure rich, not just by candy and unlimited snacks at someone's home, but then I started to measure it by, well, cars, house size, maybe number of houses or homes, clothes, jewelry. And then in the process of following Jesus and going on a journey of what it means to take his word seriously, how I measure the word rich completely changed when I read this verse about Jesus that's found in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It says this, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, get this, it is more blessed to give than receive. More blessed to give than receive. Jesus, how could that be? Because I won't lie, I love receiving. Gifts are my love language. I love getting. You don't? I mean, who, who doesn't like being on the, rece the receiving end of generosity? I mean, who doesn't enjoy getting a raise? Who doesn't enjoy getting their lunch paid for? Who wouldn't enjoy receiving an unexpected bonus? Who wouldn't love to receive a multi-million dollar inheritance from a family member? I mean, that'd be awesome, right? I mean, wouldn't we all say rich is someone who well, has received or receives a lot. And here's the deal. What I'm about to say is why I absolutely love following Jesus. And what I'm about to say is why I love talking to people who aren't church people, who aren't Jesus followers. Because following Jesus gives humanity an invitation to see life and do life in a completely different way. Jesus is looking at the typical definition of being rich, and he's going, I've got something better, better than what you've been taught. Jesus, what could be better than receiving a lot? Jesus is going, it's pretty simple, giving a lot. I mean, think about it like this. Who's richer, a person who makes a million a year or gives a million a year? Because to give a million, you're going to have to have more than a million, right? You're going to have to make more. Think about that for a second. And then we have to ask ourselves, well, which one would we rather be? A lot of us have income goals, but how many of us have giving goals? What, what I've learned from following Jesus is if you really want to be rich, make your life about giving. Make your home all about giving generosity. What you pass down to your children and your grandchildren should be centered around generosity. Be Rich is a campaign and a collection of talks we're doing to respond to the needs in our communities 
in a great way during a pandemic year. I hear people say all the time, 2020 is the worst year ever, and they can't wait for 2021. And I get it. It's been a rough year. But people, people have been hit so hard. People have lost loved ones. People have been discouraged. People have lost jobs. And I believe what that means for the church is that we have a massive opportunity to respond, ladies and gentlemen. It's what the early church was known for, and it's what we want to be known for as well. So we're doing that with this campaign by partnering with nonprofit organizations in our communities to make a difference locally and around the world. River Point Church and West End Church Partners are doing exceptional work in communities here and all over the globe. When we make a financial donation to Be Rich, every penny supports the needs and efforts of those organizations. In week one of this series, Patrick talked about how we can respond first in giving financially. Here's what we're asking everyone to do. We need 100% participation. Give a gift of $39.95. We're all doing it. And here's the deal. I know money is tight for some of us, but we're asking for 100% participation because here's what happens when we all play our part. If everyone in the general database between River Point and West End Church gave $39.95, we collectively would be able to bless our communities and our world with over $300,000. That's what we can do together. Now, for some of us, for some of you, you can do more than $39.95. I mean, some of y'all got it going on. Some of y'all can add a zero or two or three. Uh, Here's the deal. When me and my wife pray about things like this, it's a no-brainer. And here's why. The other day, I went to Target and only spent $35. Okay? I spent $35 at Target. I felt like I won the lottery. Okay? I put this on Facebook and Twitter, and people literally responded, teach me your ways. Okay? It felt like a Christmas miracle. Now, here's the funny thing about this trip. I was sent to Target by my wife to get some crackers and ginger ale Okay, she wasn't feeling well. Now, husbands watching this message, you know exactly how this is going to go, okay? Husbands, have you ever been sent on a honey-do list missions trip to Target with very specific instructions of what to get? And if her expectations are unmet, mess around and come home with the wrong stuff, that could lead to a fatality. You know exactly what I'm talking about. My wife was under the weather, non-COVID related, no worries here, and she requested some rather specific crackers, non-salted. Now, there were none that specifically said non-salted where I went, okay? So out of fear, I bought a few different brands of crackers, okay, for the risk, for the fear of risking getting that wrong, because you don't want to come home with the wrong crackers, okay? That, 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 that's, that's just stupid, okay? So with this assortment of crackers I got, the ginger ale, Of course, you got to grab some sanitizer wipes on the way out and anything else that Target tempts me to buy on my way out. That ended up adding up to a total of $35, and I was proud, and others were proud of me. It's silly, I know, but some of us spend more than $39.95 on stuff we can't even remember. Be rich is an opportunity to be a part of something bigger than ourselves that can be remembered for a lifetime. I think this is the way we get 2020 back. Oh man, we could shrink back and just go and just go with the flow. But imagine if we started to make our year something different. Now here's the deal about Be Rich. You can find everything you need to know about the Be Rich campaign and what your generosity goes towards at rpc.me slash be rich or westend.me slash be rich. You can also text the word give to the number 77977. Again, that's give to the number 77977, or you could give through the West End and River Point Church app. So that's what Patrick talked about last week, giving financially. This week, I want to talk to you about the second part of Be Rich, and that's serving. Last week was about giving of our finances. This week is about the giving of our time. Here is uh, the core verse that we are looking at in this collection of talks called Be Rich. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, it says, Teach those who are rich, which that is most of us if we're living in America, um, in this world not to be proud 
and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. Uh, doing good works often require a good amount of our time. For a lot of people, time is actually more difficult to give than money. Sometimes writing a check or swiping a card is easier than taking time out of our busy schedules to serve others. Oh, what I love about Scripture is the Apostle Paul commended those in Scripture who he often referred to as co-workers or co-laborers in Christ, depending on what translation you're reading. And one of the things I've been doing lately, which is kind of fun, is I've actually been studying the end of the letters that Paul wrote to various churches. Because the end of these letters aren't, they don't on the surface seem that spiritual, but they're a bunch of shout outs. It feels like a Twitter profile, okay? I'm talking at the Apostle Paul, okay? Like, and, and I just want to show you just a couple of, of what he commends these people on. Here are some of the things that he says. One, in Romans chapter 16, verse 1 through 3, it says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, not the one from Friends, Phoebe in the Bible, who is a deacon in the church in Centuria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ. Verse 6 says, give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Verse 9 says, greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stacius. Now, verse 12 says, give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers, and to dear Persis, who has worked hard for the Lord. He's just giving shout outs like, hey, holla at Tryphosa and Tryphena. I mean, I can't even pronounce half these names, but he's giving shout outs to these people who have worked hard and, and served. I mean, we don't, we don't preach about this very often, but the, these are are some of the people that made the first century church what it is. And in, in, in the end of his letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he says, you know that Stephanus and his household were the first of the harvest of believers in Greece, and they are spending their lives in service to God's people. I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, to submit to them and others like them who serve in such devotion. I love what it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21. Uh, Paul, again, to the church of Ephesus, he says, To bring you up to date, Tychicus will give you a full report of what I'm doing and how I'm getting along. He is a beloved brother and faithful helper in the Lord's work. This is how he ends his letter to Titus. He says, do everything you can to help Zenus the lawyer. Who's Zenus the lawyer? I don't know, but this, here he is. Okay, he's in the Bible. And Apollos with their trip. See that they are given everything they need. Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. I love at the Apostle Paul's shout out. And he's just telling stories about his friends who have just served the church faithfully. He just served the people around him. He goes, hey, go help this lawyer. Make sure they get everything that they need for their, their trip. They're doing kingdom work. Today, I have two simple questions for you with profound implications. Number one, what story do you want to tell? Let me just think about that for a second. Like, whenever your life is over, what, what's the story that you want to tell? What, what's the thing that you, you say, man, this, this is what I've done with my life? Another question, number two, what story do you want others to tell about you? I mean, just, just think about that for a second. Have you ever just paused long enough to go, all right, I, I know I, I'm trying to, you know, get married. I'm trying to, you know, find a, a, a spouse. I'm trying to build my career. I'm trying to get into school. I'm trying to do my side hustle. I'm trying to start this out. I'm trying to, trying to do all of this stuff. But at some point, we've got to ask ourselves this question, like, but what, what story do we want to tell? And what story are people going to tell about us? 
Because here's a common denominator of all of these names that I can half pronounce. None of these people knew that Paul would go on to be a best-selling author. They just served faithfully. They just served faithfully, not knowing that their story was being written. Ladies and gentlemen, the story of 2020 is being written right now. And did you know that you get to pick the part that you play? And what you can say about 2020 is that you were a part of a campaign that mattered, that made a difference in your community. You did not just sit back and do and say, all right, we'll just let whatever happens, happens. Here's what I believe. If you make your life about serving others, the answers to both questions will always be great stories to tell. I'll never forget the, the first time I was invited to serve um, with a nonprofit organization, downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a homeless shelter. And um, I, along with some other friends, got to go and just serve for a week. And here's, here's what serving others in need early in life taught me. Number one, it taught me my world isn't the world. My world is not the world. In other words, there's other people's worlds and there's other things going on, and the way that I see things isn't always the way that it is. It's just a perspective, and that's desperately needed for my life. The second thing that I learned is that my problems aren't the only problems. It's easy in a pandemic to be so focused on how it affects us and mine and my home and my family and my friends and my... But at some point, I think we've got to step outside of ourselves to go, man, there's, there's some people who, man, they're, they're in a lot much desperate of a place than I thought I was. The third thing that I learned at an early age from serving others is, well, my plans aren't better than God's plans. What, what, I, what I learned is that um, when I, I had an opportunity to play AAU basketball or select team basketball when I was in eighth grade, and instead of doing that, I went on this mission trip. And there was so much um, debate over that decision. Hey, man, you know, if you go play select basketball, you, you know, you could get, you know, seen by scouts. You can, you know, potentially go to the NBA and, all, and a bunch of just stuff, you know, and your mind kind of playing games. But I felt like I was supposed to go on a mission trip. And you know what? Looking back, I see, you know what, whatever plans I could have possibly had, God's plan is always better. And sometimes I think when we have an opportunity to serve and take time out of our busy schedule to do something else for someone else, I think we think, well, I got something better to do. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, at some point we got to go, you know what? Maybe all these plans that I've made, maybe this schedule that I've filled up, have I made space for the thing that's going to add the most value to my life? And also, have I made time in my schedule to support the story that I want to tell and to support the story I want others to tell about me. I love what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. My friend, what I want you to know is that long before you were born, God set up a good work for you to do. And I don't think that life will ever make sense until you figure out, man, Lord, what have you put me on the planet to do? I, you've got good works in store for me. Yes, absolutely. There is something God has put you on the planet to do. And I think you should spend your life trying to serve as many people as you possibly can to go, man, I want to be a part of that good work. I want you to go to rpc.me slash be rich or westend.me slash be rich and what I want you to do is I want you to um, not only give thirty nine ninety five. I also want you to uh, look at some serving opportunities they're there um, right there on the website there's uh, opportunities if you're single there's opportunities if you're uh, married there's opportunities for the whole family as well and uh, each week, there's a different one that we're, we're targeting to say, hey, we, we'd love for you to, to be a part of. We've got Refuge for Women, uh, a shoe drive, Thanksgiving Build-A-Box, uh, a food distribution event, uh, meal 
Meals for Veterans and uh, Military Members, uh, Numana, which has a goal of bringing 150,000 meals to children in Haiti, and uh, we'll be a part of preparing those meals, and uh, they'll be socially distant and safe and mask and, and all of, all of the, the COVID guidelines, so you don't have to worry about that as well. But I hope that you engage in some way in serving your community in this season. I think this is how the early church responded to trying times. If they leaned in to say, hey, if somebody's got needs, we're going to be that way. I hope and pray that each and every one of us has a Paul-like friend in our life that is a part of our story or watching our story, and we're just being faithful, and who knows the story that they'll tell about us later, but I hope that in that story we find ourselves being truly rich, rich in good works, and serving those around us. God, I thank you so much for River Point and Western Church. God, I pray that you would help us be rich. Help us be rich in good works. God, any opportunities that we're given to serve others, God, I pray that we would jump at that, we would engage in that. And may we always have a story to tell that you're involved in. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.